But you know, there's something else that's going on. We're talking about people out there and the stories that we tell to them. But you know, we're telling ourselves stories as well. We're right now telling ourselves a story about our lives. I'm up here telling myself a story about the talk that I'm giving to you. You're in the audience listening or telling yourself a story about how you don't want to be listening to the talk I'm giving, whatever it may be. We're always telling ourselves stories as well. And when people encounter us, they pick up on that as well. They pick up on the story. So if we want people to pick up on our story, all we have to do is tell a story that's going to end up being attractive to them. And what kind of stories are attractive to them? There's stories that are romances about people doing great things, but also that involve really fundamental values that are really important. If right now you're taking a look at the crisis that's going on in our economy and you're upset and you're freaking out about it, people that encounter you will pick up on that as well. If on the other hand you're looking at the opportunities that this crisis may provide for you, people are going to pick up on that as well. You know, and it's really just a fundamental decision you make whether you're going to focus on the downside or whether you're going to focus on the upside. There's a, 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 a silly story that kind of illustrates that it's about a man that's got two sons. One's an optimist and one's a pessimist. And so he wants to really figure out how his sons think about the world. So he takes the optimist and he puts him in a room, in a room full of horse manure. He takes the pessimist and he puts him in a room full of the newest, best toys that he could ever want. Half an hour later, he goes and he visits his sons again. He visits the pessimist in the room full of toys, and he finds him sitting in the middle of the room crying. And he says, why are you crying, son? Well, I've got a lot of toys, but I don't have all of the toys. I want other toys that aren't even here. He's very upset. And he says, okay. He goes and he visits his son that's the optimist in the room full of horse manure. And he walks in, and his son is sitting in the middle of this pile, throwing horse manure up in the air. And he says to him, son, what are you doing? What are you doing? Well, dad. With all this horse manure in here, there's got to be a pony here somewhere. What we need to be doing during a crisis like right now is to find out what's the opportunity. Find out what it is that we can pull out of this to give us some benefit from what's going on. I mean, because think about it. There's no percentage one way or the other in getting upset about what's happening. I mean, we need to be careful. We need to make sure that we have ourselves covered, that we've got contingency plans in place, that we're not leaving ourselves exposed. But beyond that, what benefit can we possibly get from being depressed about what's taking place? So we tell ourselves a story where we look at what's going on and it's the right thing to be optimistic about it. If we tell ourselves a story and we really believe the story that we're telling, people will pick up on it and they'll begin to mirror the way that we're feeling. If you're working with your clients and you're trying to sell them on the value of the services that you have and you really believe in those services, they're going to pick up on that. But there's no way to fake this stuff at all because people are really good detectors of lying and really bad liars. In fact, I read a study recently that said that when we're faking a smile, the corners of the mouth will go up, but the eyes will stay the same. But when it's a real genuine smile, the corners of the eyes will go up as well. We're reading all of this stuff non-verbally. So if you want to convince people, you've got to be convinced yourself. As much as possible, you've got to believe the story you're telling. And I think this comes to kind of an interesting conclusion for me, and that is there's no way to fake this. You've really got to believe this. It's as if the most successful salespeople, and whether you're selling a product or a service, or whether you're selling people that work for you, that they need to be optimistic and focus on the upside of what's going on and take advantage of it, the most successful people are people that have integrity. 